Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Play Majora's Mask. Okay, we just finished up the Oceanside Spider House, so now we are ready to collect even more things around this place. Um, and yeah, as I figured, Goron Link doesn't really work that well. He kind of gets stuck in the sand. Let me just speed up a little bit there. Uh, so where we're actually going to head is over here to the south. We haven't been to this place yet, but there's sort of an extension of Great Bay Coast here we can check out. And uh, there are some Zoras hanging around over here, which I would advise you pretty much just ignore, because it's kind of annoying um, if the Leavers will leave us alone. You're an unusual sight to see in this neck of the water. You came to see the Zora band, the Indigogos, didn't you? The members of the Indigogos are in Zora Hall up ahead, but the entrance is underwater, so if you aren't a good diver, you probably won't make it in. Oh. Well, yeah, I guess we should probably be a Zora for this place, huh? Alright, so if we talk to him... Hey, aren't you Macau? Were you able to get an empty bottle from the beavers on top of the waterfall? Oh, nice hint there. Those guys are quick, so it's pretty tough, isn't it? Yep, so that's definitely something we're going to be doing um, really soon, actually. We can also talk to this guy. Hey, Macau, you want to do that thing you used to always do? I, I don't know, what would that be? Uh, okay, but anyway, um, I think this sign might tell us something about it. Uh, yeah, Zora Game Site. Those who recklessly break pots will be fined. Oh, well, I guess Link's in trouble then. But well, what you can actually do if you want, and this really isn't necessary at all, but um, if you can line yourself up right and get like just the right distance, you can actually break all these pots with the uh, Zora Boomerang. Which, yeah, see, if you're just a little bit too far away or too close, then uh, this guy gets angry and it's like, if you lost your touch from playing too much, didn't you used to be able to break all these pots at once? Your motion was all stiff, like someone is not used to doing this. Sorry, but I have to take 10 rupees for this broken jars. What? You don't even have 10 rupees? Yes, yeah, so there's nothing I can do. I'll just have to eat the loss. So, yeah, basically, if you hit all these pots, he'll give you 100 rupees, but then still charge you 10 rupees. So you get 90 if you break them all, but it's really annoying and it's not worth it. There are much easier ways to get money. So I just figured I'd go ahead and point that out and then uh, promptly ignore it. So... <laughs> Alright, so where we're going to head is actually all the way over here. We can kind of swim through this water here a little bit faster than running along the land, I think. Um, then we can make our way up onto the shore. And if you check this thing out, um, I'm not entirely sure what the sign says, but I guess we can find out. Fall Headwaters, Beaver's Home, Beware of Swift Currents. Yeah, so there's this giant waterfall here, and you can see there's actually a like-like uh, -like underneath, as well as a few of those little skeleton fish guys. So what we're actually going to do is uh, swim down and make our way down to the bottom here. I like to swim because it's a little bit quicker and you have a little bit more control than just pressing B to dive. So you can kind of tell if you stand still, there's a current that's going to drag you around a little bit, towards the middle, mostly. So we're going to have to defeat this like-like -like without getting eaten. Um, I guess if you can, uh, if you do get eaten, it's really no big deal, but um, it's still better to be able to defeat them without it. And, of course, there you go. But if you do get eaten, you can actually just uh, use the little electric power thing that the Zora has, and that'll let you get spit out immediately. And it also killed them, which is nice. And you can see once you defeat them, a piece of heart appears there. So, that's good. Okay, so now let's make our way back up. Which takes a little while. Zora Link swims up pretty slowly, but I guess there's not much you can do about it. And we're going to climb up over here where we just went in. And now we're going to make our way back a little bit, but we're actually going to head up. You can actually see there are some platforms around here with some palm trees on them. The <laughs> sun's in your eyes there. Um, so we're actually, it kind of forms a little path to eventually get right up there, I think. And you can just barely sort of see on the map there's a little thing that sticks out. That's pretty much what we're aiming for here. So we are going to head all the way back to here. And in order to start our ascent, we're going to get on this little piece of driftwood. Change it back into Hylian Link. Look up. And we might be too far away. Yeah, see, that, that could be kind of hard to get to. I think, actually, you probably want to stand on this. Uh, get yourself up a little higher. And then you can just barely make it onto it. Nope, didn't get it. There it goes. You can just barely get it. Um, <laughs> there has to be a better way. Um, I'm pretty sure Tattle's going over here because you could play the Scarecrow song. But either way, that still works. So, I mean, it's really no big deal. Um, so we can head over here, and then pretty much we're going to be looking for a uh, different series of palm trees here that we can hookshot ourselves to. So, uh, let's see, there's a chest right here we can get, and there's just 20 rupees inside, so you can skip it if you want, but it's there, so you might as well grab it. Then we can hookshot up to this one here. I think you can also get onto that grass there, but I mean, you might as well just get onto the tree. It's quicker anyway. And then turn around this way, make our way up here, and you can see this little entrance right there. That's definitely where we're going. So let's make our way through and see what's on the other side. 
Alright, so this is the Waterfall Rapids, a rather interesting place that's really only used for one little minigame that we're going to be doing here. You can see there's uh, some of the beavers floating around here, I guess just one of the beavers, but... Um, you remember the Zora back there did say, he did ask us if we got a bottle from these guys, so, you know, we're obviously going to have to do something with them. So if we jump into the water, and, um, I think if we target this guy... Dude, get back here. There we go. If you target him, he will swim on down to the bottom. There we go. Now let's make our way down there. Hey man, how's it going? You again. You can't fool me with your green clothes. You want an empty bottle, don't you? You never learned your lesson. Coo coo coo. Okay, I'll give you one. But, only if you can swim through all the rings in the river in under two minutes. So, you want to try? Uh, yeah. There's a total of 20 rings. You must swim through them in the right order for it to count. Swim through the ring that's flashing. I'll show you the way, so follow me and don't get separated. So we're going to enter a little mini-game with this guy here. We're going to have to swing through 20 rings in two minutes. It's on a set path, and it's honestly pretty easy. This is one of the easier mini-games. Um, but it really does give you a chance to sort of get used to controlling Zora Link. You're just going to have to make some pretty nice turns. I mean, there's really nothing too difficult here, like I said. But um, it's a good place to get used to him if you actually uh, really aren't. So we pretty much just keep following him. I mean, there's only one way to go, so it's not like you're at much risk of getting lost here. Um, and just make sure you swim through the rings. They are solid, so if you hit them, you will just kind of bounce off. But, you know, it's really no big deal. You've got plenty of time to do it. So uh, basically, just make sure you go through the rings, and that's all you really need to worry about. All right, so we just keep on going here. Make our way through this one, down to this one. Watch out for the little trees. Now here's where it can start to get a little bit weird. You don't necessarily have to jump out, but you do have to get like right on the surface. So that one can be a little bit uncomfortable. So now let's keep, just keep making our way through. Like I said, this is pretty self-explanatory. I mean, it's really easy to figure out where you need to go. And right now we're pretty much in the home stretch and we still have over 50 seconds left. So like I said, this is really, really easy and almost just gets uh, tedious after a while. Because it turns out we're going to have to do this minigame not twice, not three times, but four different times. So um, <laughs> this is one of those things, it just takes a little while and it's something you got to do if you want to get that bottle in the, and actually another reward. But once we beat the game, we can talk to the beaver again. Uh, that was perfect. That's not good. Whoa, holy crap. Did you call me little brother? I called you big brother. Actually, what? An empty bottle? Yeah, an empty bottle. Don't worry, little brother. To us, empty bottles are a treasure. I can't give you one just because you beat my little brother. We can't just give you one. I'll give you one after you race once more against me. So, will you try? And this is what I'm talking about. They're gonna make you keep racing them. The rules are the same, but this time there are 25 rings. Don't fall behind. Okay, so here we go again. I figure we might as well just show this one, too, because it is technically a different variant. It's still the same type of path, but they threw in five more rings here and there, so um, it just makes you swim around a little bit more. It's still really, really easy, but um, you may actually run into trouble in a couple of spots, but... Um, looks like we're going to do this again. I mean, there's not really too much more to say about it. I've pretty much explained all there is to explain, so... Uh, it's just pretty much a matter of doing it. Alright, so here's, I think, where they start to throw in a few more that start to get a little bit more uncomfortable. You really have to watch out for the roots of those trees there. Um, if you get hit and sort of, like, get stopped, it's really not that big of a deal. You do still have time to get going again, but if you pass a ring, it can actually be pretty difficult to get back on track. So, um, just make sure if you do pass one, don't panic, because it is still definitely doable. You're just going to have to work a little bit more at it. And here we need to go through the two at the top. I think they intend for you to jump out of the water there. Now here you gotta make hard turns to the left. And once you go through this one, make a hard turn to the right in order to get there. That one can be a little bit awkward, but you find that if you just pretty much hold the control stick all the way to the left until you make it, then uh, you'll usually do it pretty well. All right, so we're in the home stretch once again, and once again, we've still got plenty of time left. So this really still isn't hard, like I said, but um, yeah, th there's an example of the ring being solid. I kind of got hung up on it for a minute. Oh, there's that moon, too. All right, so there we go. We swim through the final ring, and we still had 30 seconds to spare. He did it, little brother. Yeah, he did it, big brother. There's nothing we can do, little brother. 
This is a mess, big brother. <laughs> yes, these guys are a little strange, but we beat them twice and we get the empty bottle. We underestimated you. Yeah, you sure did, didn't you? Okay, so we're taking back out to the Waterfall Rapids, and it seems like we're done with these guys. But remember, I did mention we're going to have to play this game four different times. We've only done it twice so far. Turns out we can actually head back over here and uh, jump up onto the land that they're on. And of course, I missed it. Alright, so if we climb up and talk to him again... He's back, little brother. Yeah, he's back, big brother. But we don't have any more empty bottles, do we, little brother? No, we don't have any, big brother. If you say you still want to race, though, that's fine. What will you do? We're gonna race again. First, you have to start with my little brother. This time, the limit is 150. Don't fall behind. So, it's the exact same game that it was the first time, except they give you 10 less seconds. But, if you remember, we finished with like 30 remaining on both of them, so... It's really just a matter of doing both of these over again. Obviously, um, that would be, you know, mean of me to make you watch, so... We're gonna be cutting some of it out. So there we go, we've beat the first Beavers minigame again. He did it again, little brother. He did it again, big brother. That's shameful, little brother. Now, race me. Alright, so here we go for the fourth and final time. The same limit is the same as it was for my little brother, 150. But there are 25 rings this time. Don't fall behind. Okay, so we've beat Big Brother's game, but that should be the last time we gotta do it. He's a formidable opponent, little brother. You're all just talk, eh, Big Brother? If we give that to him, I wonder if he'll leave us alone, little brother. Yeah, I wanna quit, Big Brother. Aw, uh, so we've effectively completely demoralized these guys, but... By doing so, we get a piece of heart, so there you go. You obviously have to do it all four times. Please let it be over. <laughs> it is. It's alright. You don't have to race me anymore. We're good. Okay, so now that we've got that, we're done with the beavers, so they're kind of uh, some interesting characters, but, you know, their minigame is just a little bit tedious, if you ask me. Dive on the land. Oh, no, that was water. Okay, that looked like grass from here, as I thought it would dive on some land. Oh, well, that would have been funny, but... Um, Alright, so it's also just about night of the first day, which really doesn't matter that much. I mean, we've got plenty of time to do what we need to do. Um, so now that we've done that, that's pretty much all there is to do in that little area. I'm going to get back in the water so the levers don't bug me. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all there is to do back there, so you don't need to worry about anything else for now. Uh, it's kind of cool the sun's setting over that there. That building right there in the distance is actually Zora Hall, and it's where we're going to be heading next. You can also still see that big fish thing right out there, so... Um, I think, honestly, this looks like a pretty good place to stop watching the sunset over the beach. So, <laughs> um, next time we're actually going to head into Zora Hall and uh, meet some of the Zoras and see that Indigo Goes band that everyone's been talking about. Until then, thank you guys for watching. It's night of the first day, and I'll see you next time.